I don't know. I got a helmet here. <laughs> I just came back from a ride. Oh my gosh, Brian. I felt so slow. Oh, wait a second. Hey, hi folks. Uh, welcome back to the channel, Wild Boar Cycling. Uh, this is uh, Brian. Brian and I'm John. And Yeah, I'm breathing still a little bit hard. But man, I was so slow today. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's what I want to talk about today was you being slow. We being I mean, slow. I mean, well, no. Like, one being slow. Okay. Um, I just, you know, I haven't been doing this very long. Okay. And so all the stuff I know about cycling is all new stuff. Uh, and so there's just a lot of things I notice people who've been cycling for a really long time. Okay. Haven't, like, caught on to yet. Okay. So That, what, like, what, maybe make them slow. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about what? Like, five things? I that... think it's do five, five things a good number. Five things that are is that are making you slower on your bike. Okay, sit back and enjoy. Yeah, so I, I noticed you got jersey on. Yeah, and uh, well, and, and this yeah. is yeah, this is a thing that I don't personally have a problem with because no bike jersey is uh, too big for me. Uh, but uh. You know, loose, like, there's a reason why you wear tight clothes, right? Oh, yeah, that's and, correct. And, like, all the little floppy, all the little flippy floppies, all that slows you down. I, I heard once someone claim that, like, one wrinkle is, like, half a lot. Just one wrinkle. One wrinkle. One wrinkle. So, while I do like this jersey and the message that it sends, this is not the best to go out and look for a PR, then. You're probably not hitting PRs in that jersey. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me go change and let me have your opinion on yeah. this. Okay. Try it again. So, uh, race fit jersey. Yeah. Yeah, what do you see, Brian? I mean, there's, there's like way fewer wrinkles. It's not floppy, you know? Like it's not gonna be flapping around like a flag behind you or a cape. Right. Um, around my neck, nice and tight. Yeah, you know, I've, I've heard that if you compare like a race skin suit uh -huh. to like a good fitting jersey, mm -hmm. that's the same difference as a good fitting jersey is to like a bad fitting jersey. Okay. So you can save yourself a ton of watts by just having tight fitting clothes and you don't need to go drop a few hundred dollars on a skin suit you could even take a regular jersey find out like your local dry cleaner probably has a tailor that'll fit it a little bit won't cost you very much and it'll even save you even more wise right um I, I think that's the big lesson and if you're out shopping for a jersey don't be afraid to go look at race fit uh you may not be racing you may be going to be out and doing a um you know a century or whatever you're planning on um doesn't mean that you are going to go race, but your fit is going to be a whole lot uh, better. Uh, I love the uh, Primal Gear. This has got the, the uh, nylon grippers all the way around, around the waist. And uh, yeah, this is a race fit from them, and it fits pretty daggone good. Yeah, cool. Number one. Close. Close. If it's flapping, it's slowing you down. So, so number two. Number two. Hey, so Brian, you brought some stuff along here with you. What's on your mind? Yeah, there? well, when I was making some notes here, number two is kind of a big list, and I didn't really, it could be a whole video just talking about that, but I'm going to lump it into tires. Tires. Okay? So I wanted new tires for the Raleigh. Um, actually, what I do is I want to road tires for the new steel bike so I can have, I got another set of wheels I'm going to set up so I can switch road, off-road. And so I was going to buy new tires, and I'm thinking, why buy new tires? For that, I can take the Raleigh's 32 mil tires, put them on my steel bike, and get new fast tires. Um, and so I picked up these. Um, these caught my eye because, as one does, I was scrolling through bicycle tire rolling resistance.com. Uh, and this popped up. I hadn't seen it on there before. This is the fastest tire that that website lists um, under seven watts of rolling resistance per tire, which is tiny. Um, Compare that to your favorite Gator Skins, uh, mm -hmm. which are like almost pushing 30 watts per tire. Uh, so, you know, it's not just tires though, uh, but tires could be slowing you down if they're cheap or if you prioritize puncture resistance, uh, they're making you slow. Um, if you get the wrong tubes, if you're running the wrong pressures. You know, let's talk about tubes for a second because yeah, we've yeah. been going about this and, and I'm completely away from butyl. I don't use butyl tubes at all yeah, anymore. Yeah. Uh, on my road bikes, I do like the latex. I find they're just as light as going tubeless and then I don't have the headache if I have a catastrophe out on the road. Uh, my gravel bike and my mountain bike, pff, 
they are tubeless because I love being able to roll out with that lower pressure. You know, and Brian, I'm telling you, this is something I see all the time when I'm out on club rides or I'm out on team rides, tires that are improperly inflated. So you got your tire choice. I, I think the number three thing is make sure that your tires are correctly inflated. And that's really easy to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the easy way to do it? Uh, well, there's a bunch of calculators. I We like the Silka tire cal pressure tire, cal tire pressure calculator. Um, but there's a ton of free ones. You go in, you enter in your weight and where you're riding and the tires. And it'll tell you what pressure to put them at to be yeah. optimal for rolling resistance and efficiency. Cool. So here's a really cool graphic. Uh, I took a screenshot of my setup from Silka on my gravel bike. Took my weight on my bike my weight with my gear on, the kind of tires I'm running, and the kind of ride that I'm doing. And I think that's really important. Uh, so this is just what I saw here when I inflated mine. Looks a lot lower than you might expect, huh? Yeah. So that, that's a good thing to think about. Um, so we're talking about tires and tire pressure. Uh, folks, here's another mistake I see people making. You've got to make, especially in the gravel world, you've got to make your tire choice based upon the course that you're going to ride. Because you can go through all the rolling resistance and you can go through all those other factors like sidewall protection, puncture resistant, blah, blah, blah. But if you have the wrong tire for the type of course that you're running, you're, you're, you're going to be slower to begin with. Make sense? Makes sense. Cool. And I think the thing is that there's so many resources out there you can look up what you need to be do what what you need in order to do what you want to do right that's optimal and i guarantee unless you're on a velodrome it ain't 23 mil tires anymore no you still to wear in 23s they're slowing you down and they're making you uncomfortable right cool all righty so brian what you thinking about the third thing that people should stop doing what, what, what do you see now yeah and i mean this is kind of a like an older thing that goes back to you know the early 2000s of racing everybody and everybody focusing on weight of their bike now this is going out of fashion because all this modern science says aero is way more important uh if you look at the pro peloton most people aren't butting up against the weight limit anymore because they know that you can have slightly heavier wheels that are more aero and that will make you faster compared to saving half a kilogram. And so you don't need to prioritize weight. I mean, there's other reasons to prioritize weight, but if you're trying to go faster, always go for aero because the aero is always working. The weight only works when you're climbing. Um, obviously, there's, there's reasons to not focus on this. Like if it's a hill climb race and there's no downhill and there's no flat, right. weight's where it's at, right? But arrow 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 it's always gonna it's always gonna do better than light um, yeah and i think uh folks out there in youtube land if you're thinking about it, you want to make your bike a little bit quicker you just mentioned it a wheel set and an arrow wheel set is probably one of the best investments that you can make yeah i mean next next to tires next to tires yeah uh, tires is the best bang for your buck uh wheel sets number two yeah Hey, uh, I want to touch a little bit more on the arrow piece because you don't have to buy anything to do the next one. You just have to look at your hand position. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so Brian, uh, I'm going to go out here in the uh, in, in my pain cave, and then you can take some video of me on the different ones, and we'll talk about which ones should you do and which ones shouldn't you do. How about that? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. So, what do you think about this hand position there, Brian? I mean, that looks like the slowest of the slow that slowest you can get on a road bike. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things going on here, aren't there? Yeah. First of all, what do we see? Straight arms. My arms are absolutely straight, and I'm sitting up nice and tall, and where's all that wind going to catch me? Right in the chest. Great. Okay, let's look at another common position on the bike. It's down the hoods. Uh, how about this position? What does this look like? I mean, it's it's marginally faster, but still looks pretty slow. And why does it look slow? Your arms are straight. Your head's yeah. up. My head is up. So by simply dropping my shoulders and bending my elbows, what happens to my body position? You get a lot lower, a lot more arrow. And a lot more arrow. Correct. Now, so 
I see a lot of folks ride with straight shoulders or straight arms and their elbows or their shoulders up to their ears. I mean, relax those shoulders and bend those elbows and you're going to be a lot softer on your hoods. Yeah. Uh, the other position that I particularly like, you know, this is my, my typical go-to. How's this one look? That looks pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm down as far as I can get. I still have access to my shifters. I have access to my brakes. And I'm not all the way slammed arrow. Yeah. But my, our elbows are bent. Yeah. And I think the real important thing here is that your, your forearms are almost horizontal, which means they're presenting the smallest area to the wing that they can. Correct. All right, last position we see a lot of folks on, all the way on the drops. What's going on here, Brian? I see, I think you just got slower there. Because your, your arms are straight. Okay. Uh, your head actually came up a little bit, so you're a little taller. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of the old school fast way to do it, but we know now that faster than down in the drops is up on the hoods, arms up on the So, and even if I bend my elbows a little bit, you know, to soften it, I still am much more arrow when I'm up here on my hoods and my forearms are parallel to the ground. Yep. Cool. Any other thoughts on uh, body position? Yeah, this is this is interesting. This is why I think that push-ups are very important for cyclists because my triceps get tired uh, in that position. Yeah. Yeah, and of course you, you can't do this anymore. Well, the UCI has no jurisdiction over me. That's true. Okay, you can also go to the puppy. What do they call this? The, the puppy, puppy paws. paws. Puppy yeah, paws, yeah, yeah. position. Uh, I find this really uncomfortable and <laughs> I'm a little loose on the handlebars when I do it though. Yeah. Great. All right, so bend your elbows, use your hoods, and stay away from the drops. Cool. Uh, Brian, uh, the next thing on your list is uh, <clears throat> how do you lubricate your chain? And you have heard Brian and me wax on and on. Wax on and on. That's funny, isn't it? You did that yeah, on purpose. Yeah, I did that on purpose. So up, up here's a link to those videos. But I tell you what, what have you learned about wax? Yeah, I mean, so I don't want to just focus on wax because there, you don't, like waxing, in my opinion, is one of the ways to go, especially for where we live and where we ride. Right. Um, I know I finally convinced you to go waxing when you saw how clean the chains were. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and waxing is cleaner. Uh, waxing w saves you money because your parts wear slower, um, but it also saves you some watts. It makes you marginally faster. But that's not necessarily what I want to focus on here is like you can go out and the, online you can search. There are people who've tested all the lubes you can buy. And some of them are really slow, mm -hmm. like an order of magnitude more watts consumed in your drivetrain versus really good lubes. Right. And it doesn't and it's not necessarily expensive versus cheap. Uh, the most recent one I saw, which is a few years old, like regular plain old food grade paraffin wax mm -hmm. was the fastest they tested. Wow. Uh, which, like, I mean, we like Silka. Silka's a great chain wax. Uh, and they actually, that wasn't on the list of things tested. But, you know, you don't have to go out and drop whatever 30 bucks on Silka wax. Regular wax will do just fine. Yep. Um, but, you know, don't just grab a lube or don't use a lube because you've always used it. You should check to make sure it actually is a good one. Because some of them are slow and some of them wear your chain and your drivetrain super fast very quickly you're yeah. spot on okay cool so um number four, the, number four <laughs> lube 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 figure out what you're doing and what's going to make you quicker on your bike okay brian here it comes ready for it number five don't ride every day what do we learn yeah, rest day i mean you know i don't i don't know how many tough guy Cyclists, hardcore out there, are pushing themselves every single day. You're not getting faster by doing that. No. Um, you have to use your rest days. Now, every day is not a rest day, uh, but you have to be using your rest days because if you don't have rest days, your body can't heal and take advantage of the workout that you did. Um, so make sure your plan incorporates rest days right. and, and the slow recovery ride days. That's the same thing as a rest day in my book. Um, you can't go push it hard every single day because eventually you'll either hurt yourself or plateau. 
Uh, but rest days, rest days, rest, rest days. days. Yeah, and it doesn't mean you don't do anything on your rest day. I mean, it could be a stretching routine that you might be using. And personally, for my rest days, I, I like doing a yoga session. And it's not a big one. I'm just taking it easy, doing a recovery session with yoga. And it just really helps me feel better when I get back on the bike. Yeah, love it. Okay, folks, well, there you have it. Uh, five things to stop doing if you want to get faster on your bike. Now, not everybody's going to want to go out and race. Not everybody goes out and races. Uh, but you may have a, um, a century coming up and you want to do a distance ride or a charity event or something like that. And you may want to think, oh, gosh, I want to go a little bit quicker. Um, these are five good things. And so let's summarize them for them. Brian, what's number uh, one? What, what were they? They were uh, close. Close. Clothes gotta fit. Two. Uh, tires, tubes, pressure, that whole lump of whatever tires. And, and we'll put the link to the Silka tire pressure calculator here down in the description, okay? Three. Uh, third one was arrow. Uh, arrow. Yeah. You know, just because it's light doesn't mean it's fast, but arrow is fast. Arrow is fast. Four. Chains. Chain. Chain lube. Uh, look up your chain lube. Make yeah. sure it's a fast one. Take a look at it. And last but not least, rest day, rest buddy. Day. Rest day. Rest day. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you're, and that doesn't mean sitting around doing nothing, but it means taking a rest day. Great. Okay. Well, I hope you found these five things to stop doing uh, helpful. And if you did, make sure you do that standard YouTube stuff like like, subscribe, and notify so you know when our next production is coming available. Hey, in the meantime, go out and ride. Have fun. Get arrow. <laughs> Get arrow. Check your tire pressure. Check your tire pressure and a whole bunch of other things yeah, in the yeah. process. And, uh, of course, uh, keep the rubber side down. Uh, I think next time when we come on next Sunday, I'm going to have some uh, inside the gravel race video oh, for you yeah. all. So uh, heading out on location again. Uh, boy, it seems like I've been out on location more than I've been back here in the garage or in the studio. So, hey, y'all. Uh, have a great day. Enjoy. Bye.